That was actually easy to do, you know, holding up those books because I haven't read shit lately. Roll the intro. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and this is... And this is what? Welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. Um, so this year, let's talk about this year. This year has been really bad for me reading-wise, but it's been really good for me money-wise, so you know. The scale kind of evens itself out. I've been reading, but I've been reading really slowly, and I've also been doing all of the DNFing. Don't worry, that video will probably be up after this video about all of the books that I've DNF this year because I've been, I'm looking over there and there's a bunch. I've been DNFing a lot. Simply because, you know, sometimes you just don't feel like re putting yourself through a book that you don't like. But that's not this video. This video is all about the books that I have read this year. I don't have them in order. I have them in order of when I picked them up off of the floor. They've been sitting here. If you've seen my videos, they've been sitting here for a while. So let's just talk about them. The first one I want to mention is Miss, not Mistborn. It's The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, this is Mistborn book one. I have a whole Monica's Judgment video up here, which I will link up here and down below if you want to watch it, about my feelings about this book. But just so you know, I gave it four stars. It was okay. <laughs> Go watch the video and figure out why. The next book I have here is Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. Now I read this back in January, I think, and I have and I gave it two stars. This book is about a man who is stuck in a house full of statues and the house has like water that moves through it and the, the premise itself is really really good. However, what didn't end up getting me like to love this book is just that I didn't like the characters. Usually with these sort of like weird books you have to really like the characters or at least I really have to like the characters in order to get through them and I just didn't enjoy the character like I wasn't I wasn't his fan I wasn't his number one fan I was just there reading about him and also there's another character that comes in there's a few characters that come in and none of them were compelling enough for me for me to get through the weird factor of the book because I love weird books like somebody told me when I put up that it was only two stars they're like oh yeah I like really strange books and I'm like Dude, I love Jeff Vandermeer. I love really strange books too. It's just that the characters weren't compelling enough in this book for me to get through it. Actually, I found the main character kind of dumb. Like, there's something that happens in the book and that it's really clear to the reader, but the main character just doesn't get it. And it's like, why don't you get it? Like, it, it, I mean, it's set up so that he definitely should be able to understand what's going on around him. But he just doesn't understand what's going on around him. And that was really frustrating as a reader because I was like, I know what's happening. Like, I know what's coming. Why doesn't this main character hurry the fuck up? And it's really short and it felt so fucking long. However, I do think about this book a lot. You know, I think um, I, I pulled out Horrid by Katrina Lino because Horrid at the beginning I also gave two stars but then I ended up bumping it up to five stars don't don't even we'll get to that in, an, in another video but yeah I just didn't like this book but maybe with time I'll like appreciate it more I think sometimes giving ratings to books right away right after you read them is not a good idea because some things seem better than they are like or that they seem better than what you would actually think about them later on. So, um, yeah, for now it's standing at a two star. I still think this is one of the most beautiful books I own. I'm going to keep it because I just, you know, I love it. I, it, was a, it, was a, it was a present also. But I, I love this book physically. And I found out recently that I'm actually a collector of books, not a reader of physical books. Another video, another video for another time. Piranesi, two stars. Let's move on. I have here like a small little stack of sci-fi books that I've read and I'm gonna start with the first one with this The Martian by Andy Weir. The Martian by Andy Weir tells the story of a man who is an astronaut. Astronaut, I cannot say that word. I can never say that word, it sounds so strange. Astronaut, it's an astronaut, not an astronaut. Anyway, he's an, he is a man that goes to space. <laughs> 
<laughs> but he's actually a botanist and they send him on a mission to Mars and uh, through, a, through a whole slew of misunfortunate events he gets left behind on Mars thinking that he's dead when he's actually alive and the whole premise of the story is how do we get this man back when going to Mars takes about five years they don't want to tell his crew that he's alive and well he has to figure out how to survive 300 to 500 days on Mars without food and he is the funniest person that you've ever met. I really enjoyed this book because of the funny aspect of it and while this book does have a lot of like actual science to it i don't think that that's the important part or i don't think that that's the part that i really connected with i just connected with the character like i was saying before with piranesi if this book didn't have a compelling character i wouldn't have connected with it very well because it did have a lot of science and i don't know if you know but i'm not a sciencey person even though i love sci-fi i just I'm not a science person. I'm like, why does it rain? Well, I don't know, you know, like I'm kind of dumb like that. However, I will say I had seen the movie The Martian before. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I actually recommend the movie more than the book. The book focus is way, way too heavy on the science aspects to the point where I was just kind of skim reading passages because I just didn't, I didn't care about what was going on. I was like, Okay, yeah, I get what you're where you're coming from and stuff like that, but I just don't care. So mm, I didn't care about parts of it. However, do I recommend you read the book? Sure, of course. It's a fun book. It's a it's one of those sci-fi books that everybody kind of and their mother has read. It's kind of like Mistborn, but in sci-fi. Well, no, I guess that would be Dune. But anyway, I recommend that you read it. It's a fun ride. You are going to fall in love with Mark Watney. I think that um, Andy Weir wrote one of the most wonderful, like, realistic people that has been written in fiction in a really long time. So I just, I recommend it. I gave this 4.5 stars. Still think the movie's better though. Next up, we have Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I just, this book is going right over here in my favorite books of all time. I think this book is amazing. I have a whole book to movie adaptation project about it, which if you guys don't know, my book to movie adaptation projects is where I read a book and I watch a movie. But the whole point of it is that I, I can't have seen any of the mediums you know i can't have read the book when i can't have watched the movie before that's why i didn't do it for the martian it's one of my favorite series that i do on here but it does so badly <laughs> with views that i kind of wonder if i should keep doing it but you know what i'm probably gonna keep doing it because this channel as much as i love to please you i also like to please myself because if not it's just really boring but anyway never let me go by kazu ishiguru is the story of basically the ethics of human cloning and what would happen if we could clone people with the sole purpose of using their organs to better our lives, the people that are born naturally, and how their lives are not different than ours except in our perception of them. I think that that's the best way that I can explain this book. This book, the, uh, this book follows three um clones you figure out really fast that they're clones they're called i don't remember their names but they go to this islam academy now islam is a place where they're trying to get people to figure out like they're tr they're trying to treat these children like children and not like pieces of meat that were just kind of growing organs in you know so they go they have like an idyllic childhood everything is good until they get older and they realize that they are going to have to donate organs there's also a beautiful love story and there's a love triangle in here which i think makes sense and isn't forced and i just really recommend it i loved it it's it's one of those thing it's one of if you like Good Morning Midnight by, you know, I was going to say by me, no, it's by Lily Dalton Brooks, um, then you're going to like this. Good Morning Midnight is one of those books where a lot of nothing happens and yet it's important. Well, this book is the same thing. You get passages of nothing is happening and yet all of it is important. So if you kind of like those slow burn, almost 
spl slices of life kind of books, then you're really gonna enjoy this one. I would love to I would I would love to recommend this to people that don't normally read sci-fi but that read contemporary because this almost reads like a contemporary and if you didn't like really pay attention to the sci-fi aspects or like the like one one third of the book <laughs> then you really like the sci-fi doesn't play a big role in it it's just there as kind of a catalyst for for the story but it's not the story if you know what I mean I don't know if you know what I mean anyway I gave this five out of five stars I fucking loved it and I'm obsessed with it next up the last book I've read in a long long time and that is uh, flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes flowers for Algernon is a sci-fi um, masterwork no it's a <laughs> it's a sci-fi classic and it's the story of a man named Charlie Charlie has a very low IQ he has developmental problems and he comes to this doctor or these doctors who have managed to make a really really intelligent mouse and they're going to do the same operation they did on the mouse on Charlie now it's no like spoiler that the operation works however the effects the operation has on Charlie and on Algernon who is the mouse is kind of quite compelling and it just begs the question where is intelligence what is intelligence and would you rather be less intelligent but happy or would you rather be very intelligent and very unhappy not that those things are like that not that very intelligent people are unhappy or that non-intelligent people are happy and also what the fuck is intelligence anyway like this book asks all those questions okay there are intelligent people that are happy unintelligent people that are unhappy it just asks this question about focused on intelligence and what it is and how it is perceived and how people are perceived because of it I here's my gripe with it first of all this book was written written I think in the 60s let me check 70s 70s so I'm not a fan of some of the word usage. I think I wrote down that they definitely use words that I wouldn't use today. Um, they use the R word. Um, if that's something that would make you read, make you not want to read this book, I completely understand. I wasn't aware because nowhere, no reviewer says that this book says the R word. But my issue with this was the characters were not compelling compelling at least not to me i didn't find them i even though i was very invested in charlie's journey i found charlie himself to be not a compelling character especially when he gets intelligent he's kind of a dickhead so <laughs> i just don't like it i i i yeah i wanted to like this more but here's the thing i was expecting more with the mouse and I wanted this to be more about the intelligence of animals because that is a subject that I'm very interested in and how we humans separate ourselves from the rest of the animal kingdom due to our intelligence and yet at the same time we find that animals are very intelligent creatures. So I was wanting more about the mouse and I got more about Charlie so honestly I didn't really enjoy my reading of this book as much as I wanted to I also I think it was really hyped up a lot of people were talking about it a lot of people were telling me oh I want to know what you think a lot of people cry at the end of this book I think there's a reason for that I mean you get to follow this man completely change who he is and find out that maybe he was happier before he changed and 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 how the changes actually isolate him and also it, it again it's in the back of the book this is not a spoiler the operation works only for a little while and then he starts to deteriorate and i think it deals a lot with dementia and what the people go through and it's sad it's so sad and yet it's just not what i wanted so i gave this book 3.5 stars i still think it's a good read again especially for people that are not into sci-fi because a lot of people would think this is not a sci-fi book but yeah this is definitely sci-fi this operation doesn't doesn't exist it's science fiction 
but yeah i think that for people that enjoy contemporary um and that can get past those things that i said um they would really enjoy this book i i enjoyed it i mean i'm gonna keep it i'm gonna keep this book but um it wasn't what i wanted it to be that's that's what i'm trying to say and that's it those are all the books that i've read this year i'm in the middle of a few books that's another video that's coming i have a lot of videos that are coming but yeah i hope that you enjoyed this video i hope that you enjoyed my thoughts if you have any any comments on any of the books that i talked about please leave them down below and if you don't have anything to say but you still want to give me some love it really does help leave a like subscribe or just comment a black heart down below or a red heart i know a lot of people are like oh i can't comment black hearts because i'm not on mobile well just leave a red heart down below it really does make my day when um people comment so without any further ado i bid you adieu thank you so much for watching i remind you that i post every mondays wednesdays and fridays and that i will see you in another galaxy far far away bye bye guys